This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Pretty fun. A slate of baseball games for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We're going to go across the diamond all the way. We're talking money lines, strikeout props, and even a couple of home run props that I like for today. Two money lines, three strikeout props, two home run props, all available at FanDuel Sportsbook and all ones. I like quite a bit. We'll break those down, why I'm into them, and what we should do with them over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down this Monday MLB slate, breaking down where my numbers are showing value over at FanDuel Sportsbook and my top bets of the night. We'll dig on into the money lines first, then go strikeout props, home run props, and and also recap last week. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Big week this week here on the show. Our full NFL draft prop betting preview with Dr. Ed Fang is coming up tomorrow. We'll add on to break down his favorite props we have not yet discussed here on the show for Thursday's NFL draft. On Wednesday, Brandon Gadula will swing by and talk about some golf. We'll also talk NBA playoffs here. We'll have NHL playoffs this week. All of that right here in the same feed. So just search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts or find us over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Hit subscribe there. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating or give us a thumbs up. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can get in on the action right from first tip with FanDuel. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. That's right. Just place a three-plus leg same-game parlay or same-game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game, and you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Massachusetts. Hope is here. Gambling helpline MA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text hope y In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in here to this MLB Monday slate and start things off with the two money lines that I like. The first one is in Toronto. I like the White Sox at plus 144 taking on the Blue Jays here. My model puts the White Sox win odds at 44.7%. Their implied odds at plus 144 are 41%. And honestly, for me, this was a bit of a surprise because my model was low on the White Sox coming into this year. It has not told me to bet them super often thus far. So seeing them pop up as being a value did catch me by surprise. I think it may be due to the disconnect between Lance Lynn's results so far this year and some of the underlying numbers. Now I say some intentionally there because not all of them are, are positive. His ERA is 7.59, but quality strikeout rates, uh, not too many walks for Lance Lynn. He is letting up too much hard contact, which is why his expected ERA at Baseball Savant is 6.16. But that number takes a bit longer to stabilize than plate discipline numbers. Anything with batted ball numbers will take longer to stabilize than plate discipline numbers. Chris Bassett on the opposing side has had two consecutive good starts. One against Detroit, which you can discount. Other one, though, against Houston, which is a decent offense. I think there's enough here for me to bite on the White Sox at this number. So the White Sox money line plus 144. Again, I've got that at 44.7% to win. I think they're a quality bet for today. So the White Sox, the first team I want to turn to for tonight. 
The second one is actually going to be a bit later, and this one is going to be the San Francisco Giants. They're plus 106 here against the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, this was even money earlier on this morning over at FanDuel for the Giants. It has moved a bit towards the Cardinals, but I think that was more so to get in line with the rest of the market because the Giants typically plus 105 across the board, regardless whether it's even money. Plus 106, I have value on the Giants because my numbers have them as favored in this game. 53.3% win odds here. Alex Cobb getting the start for the Giants. He has looked lights out with his new slider so far this year. He's got a 2.90 skill interactive ERA across four starts. He is letting up hard contact, which we do not like, but a lot of that hard contact is on the ground. And the hard contact rate I'm using is baseball savant's hard contact rate, which means an exit velo of 95 plus miles per hour and 95 is bad regardless, but it's less bad when it's on the ground. And Cobb has a 59% ground ball rate across those four stars. He does face a very tough offense in the Cardinals for tonight, even against righties are not as good as lethal as they are against lefties, but they're still very good against righties. A 117 WRC plus in the current active roster since the start of last year. So they're definitely tough. But again, I think that Cobb's ground ball right helps keep things in check here. They're ho- they're at home. I feel comfortable giving the Giants a slight edge here. So it has moved to plus 106. Maybe keep an eye on that market, see if we can get maybe a little bit to 110 or so. But even at 106, even if it goes back to even, even money, I still think there's value in the Giants. So the Giants, to me, a good money line bet for today. So the two money lines I like across baseball for today, I got the White Sox at plus 144 and the Giants at plus 106 based on the current odds at FanDuel Sportsbook. Strikeout props, there are three of them. My favorite one is going to be in the Tigers versus Brewers game. I want to check this one first to make sure it is still there because it was a different number in other books, but it is still there as of right now. That is Matthew Boyd under five and a half strikeouts at minus 148. Now, minus 148 is laying a pretty big number on an under at five and a half, but I do feel really good in this one because uh, you look at other books, this number is at four and a half elsewhere. It's, it is plus money on the under, but I think it should be four and a half versus five and a half. Boyd has yet to have more than four, four strikeouts so far this year. His max pitch count is 82. So that pitch count could spike in this game, but he's on the road facing the Brewers. They've got some pretty solid righties like William Contreras quite a bit, William Adamas, guys like that. It's not the world's best match. Not the worst either, but it's not the best. Boyd has had some success moving back into the rotation, but it's, I think, I think at least, all been due to his suppression of hard contact. That's a great thing to have as a pitcher because contact suppression is a skill. It matters. It's a great thing to have, but it's not going to get you strikeouts. He has been, you know, a 3-4-4 four, four so far this year. I have Boyd projected to go above that at 4.20 for tonight, but. I still think that there is good value on the under at five and a half. So again, minus 148 is definitely a lot to lay. If that were to go down to four and a half, I do have him as uh, a little bit as a favorite to go under four and a half as well. So if this number moves down to four and a half, or if you can't bet at FanDuel, um, I would see some value on under four and a half, but I prefer to lay the juice at minus 140 under five and a half, because to me, having two strikeouts of wiggle room or 1.8 strikeouts of wiggle room is better than having less than that at a better number. So Matthew Boyd under five and a half minus 148, the first bet in terms of strikeouts for tonight. The second one is in a rematch of a matchup we saw about 11 days ago. That is Johnny Brito facing off against the Minnesota Twins. The first matchup did not go well for Brito, and I like his under for tonight. Under four and a half for Brito is minus 38 in the strikeout department. And it's not just that Twins game. Brito has had more than three strikeouts just once so far this year, and this is at four and a half. One of those poor showings was against Minnesota. Uh, if you remember that game was one where Edouard Julien made his debut and the twins had like 16 home runs in the first inning. Brito went two thirds of an inning, no strikeouts, one walk, seven earned runs. Now he faces them again in this time. He's on the road. Now the caveat there is it's extremely cold tonight in Minneapolis, which does favor pitching versus hitting. So that could aid Brito a decent amount. But the Twins have gotten Jorge Polanco back uh, since that time. There's an outside chance maybe Alex Kirilov could be back too. I have Brito projected for 3.38 strikeouts. So 
you know, kind of like Boyd, it is a lot to lay minus 138, but I think that's justified here. So Brito under four and a half strikeouts, minus 138, hasn't had a ton so far this year. Repeat matchup on the road. Twins getting healthier. I think we should lay uh, the minus 138 on the under with Brito here. The final strikeout prop is out in Arizona. That's something Brad Keller. Brad Keller is a very different pitcher this year than he was last year. If you look at his two starts, he has gone over three and a half strikeouts twice in four starts. So you see minus 112 and over three and a half. You might think, okay, he's done it 50% of the time. Why would I want the over here? But in the two games where he did go over, he had six and seven strikeouts. And that leads to a strikeout rate of 21% for Keller thus far. And I put a lot of stock in that because... He's a very different pitcher. He is effectively taking everything he did last year where the results were pretty awful and put it in the trash. Very different repertoire. 20.7% uh, strikeout rate. I've got Keller projected for 4.46 strikeouts here. So not a huge number, but to get over three and a half, you don't need a huge number. Other reason I can feel good about Keller getting to four strikeouts here is because of length. He went 105 pitches in one of his starts, 94 in another. I'm projected at 95 right now, which means I could be under uh, what he ultimately winds up going. He's facing off with Arizona here. Arizona below average in terms of strikeouts versus righties, a 20.2% strikeout rate versus righties since the start of last year. So not a big strikeout team, but Keller goes deep in games, has been getting a decent number of strikeouts this year, at least relative to previous years. And... I think with a respectable ground ball rate may allow him to go deeper in the game as well, be a bit more effective. So Brad Keller over three and a half minus 112, the third strikeout prop I want to go to. So the three strikeout props, Brad Keller over three and a half minus 112, Matthew Boyd under five and a half minus 148, and Johnny Brito under four and a half at minus 138. As mentioned, though, there are actually a couple of home run props that I like for today. One of them is actually in that exact same game we talked about with Keller uh, with the Diamondbacks and the Royals. I love MJ Melendez to go deep. He is 6-1 to one right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, and I frankly don't really understand why. This is the best game in terms of weather for tonight where temperatures will be in the 80s. They typically leave the roof open at Chase Field when that's the case. So that's a positive here. And Melendez has gotten very unlucky so far in 2023. His WOBA, his weighted on base average, is 280. But his expected WOBA at Baseball Savant is 346. Huge discrepancy there. And the reason his expected WOBA is so high, despite a big strikeout rate, is that he has a 17.8% barrel rate with a 53% fly ball rate and a 62% fly ball rate. He is, or 62% hard hit rate. So he's putting the ball in the air and hitting it hard. That's going to lead to strikeouts eventually, just striking out too much. He's facing Tommy Henry here, and Henry can get some strikeouts for sure, so that's one concern. But Henry, when he made a short stint in the majors last year, led up a 39% hard hit rate with a 42% fly ball rate. So Melendez gets a good park for home runs for tonight. He's facing a pitcher who lets up a lot of fly balls and hard contact, and Melendez himself is due for some positive aggression I think that adds up to make him a really good value bet at six to one. I was looking here at Rhode Island Sportsbook, try to bet him here. He is plus three, seven. So can't take that one. That's annoying. But if Angel Sportsbook, they are far more generous. You can get him at six to one there. The other home run prop that I like is also on a guy who barrels the ball a lot. And that's going back to another game we talked about before with the Tigers and the Brewers. The guy I like here is Kerry Carpenter. Carpenter's home run home run odds at FanDuel Sportsbook were plus 630, and they are still there. Plus 630 for Carpenter to go deep for today for the Detroit Tigers. He's facing Colin Ray, and Ray has always struggled with hard contact. It's a 50% uh, hard hit rate this year. It's a very small sample, uh, just two starts. But looking back to 2021, looking back to his first in the big leagues, has always let up a lot of hard contact. And Carpenter supplies it. He has a 20% barrel rate so far this year. And it was 11% last year. 11% is very good for a young guy like Carpenter. So he took that number and has almost doubled it. Carpenter puts the ball in the air. They're in Milwaukee first night. I am guessing the roof will be closed there because it is pretty cool. 
And like Melendez, Carpenter's home run odds much shorter elsewhere again, you know, in the threes at some other spots, but plus 630 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So both MJ Melendez and Kerry Carpenter in my eyes, very good home run bets for today. As you know, home run bets, my most, not my most comfortable market, but these are two I feel pretty good about for today. So Carpenter plus 630, Melendez six to one, the home run bets I am turning to for today. So. Hopefully that sets you up for a fun night across Major League Baseball and you can uh, get those bets in. We'll see how they play out, but I think all those look pretty okay as far as this week. That's going to wrap up our forward-looking stuff for today. But as always, we do want to recap what went down here on the show in previous weeks to give you some transparency, recap our bets, and let you know uh, how things went here on the show. Let's start things off. In talking about last week and talking about the UCL, uh, the UEFA Champions League, we had Dr. Ed Feng on last week to preview that the UCL quarterfinals. You can find Ed on Twitter at the power rank and Ed's one bet that he liked a lot in the UCL last week was Benfica to win over Inter Milan at plus 240 and Benfica was down three to one uh, in the second half in this match. I think they were down three to one in like the 68th minute, but they scored goals in the 86th minute and in stoppage time. To get a draw. So no win there uh, on the bet, but they did make it close at the end. Uh, Benfica did get the draw. They made it close. So not a winner, uh, no cash in our pockets, but uh, I think that Ed being high in them made a lot of sense. Just couldn't quite get the win there. We'll have Ed on again tomorrow to break down his thoughts on the NFL draft. And again, follow Ed on Twitter at the power rank. Our golf guy last week was Brandon Gadula. As always, you can find him on Twitter at Gadula 13 previewing the Zurich classic. The winners of that event were Nick Hardy and Davis Riley. They were not on Brandon's card. The outrights Brandon life were spawn and Buckley at 32 to one. And Mitchell and M at 13 to 1. Mitchell and M in contention pretty much the entire week, but finished sixth. Spawn and Buckley finished 26th. The non outrights of Brandon were Robbie Shelton and Lee Hodges at uh, uh, plus 330. That was uh, for a top 10. And then he had Wu and Bramlett top 20 at plus 135. Wu and Bramlett did give it a good run. Just a couple of strokes off and finished 26. They were two strokes off. Shelton and Hodges missed the cut. So we'll bring it back on Wednesday this week to preview the Mexico, Mexico Open. Uh, so not Tuesday in the typical slot. We'll have Ed on there, but we'll get Brandon's thoughts on the Mexico Open next week. And then we get back to some uh, elevated fields for the PGA the following week after that. In the EPL, our guest this week was Austin Cass. You can find him on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work over at numberfire.com. And Austin recommended three bets. All three wound up winning. Those were the Leicester money line at plus 145, Liverpool over two and a half goals at minus 130, and Mohamed Salah to score a goal at minus 134 or what, minus 135. Leicester won. Uh, they beat the Wolves two to one. Liverpool won three two. So that gets the over two and a half goals. And the guy who put them over two and a half goals was Salah. He had a goal in the 70th minute. Uh, so a clean sweep there for Austin. Again, at plus 145. Minus 130 and minus 135. Good calls by Austin there. Again, you can find his full uh, EPL betting guides over at numberfire.com. Find him on Twitter at Austin Cass to see his great work there. Our UFC guest this past week was Austin Swain. You can find him on Twitter at a Swain three. He had a recommendation in the, uh, in the, in the headliner for this week, Curtis blades. He liked blades by submission at nine to one. So going out of the limb there and blades did not win. So couldn't get that one there. But again, when you're, Doing long, long shot bets. They're typically long shots for a reason, and you're going to lose those more often than not. But I think value is value. So I like the analysis there by Austin at nine to one. Just couldn't quite get the win. Money lines for Austin were on uh, Dana Botchergall. Probably butchered that pronunciation over Brady Highstand at minus 150. Highstand got the win there. Matthew Semmelsberger money line at minus 113. He lost his event. And then he had Lucindo by knockout or submission at plus 220. Lucindo did win but it was by decision versus knockout or submission. So again, you know, you take some swings. I like Austin's willingness to take the value where he saw it. Even if it was on, you know, log shots that don't have super high probability of winning, couldn't quite get the job done there, but I uh, appreciate his willingness to seek out value where he saw it in that one. In NASCAR, I had uh, three different outrights for this week. One of those was in the Xfinity series. That was Josh Balicki at 200 to one. Uh, he was 40 to one to podium, 14 or 14 to one to finish inside the top five. Balicki actually closed at minus one or at uh, not minus. Ooh, that'd be great. Uh, plus 125 or 
he was 125 to one to win when he was 200 to one when we met, recommended him here on the show. So did get some closing line value on that. And Balicki hung out in the back for most of this race, kind of minding his own business. And it was a pretty clean race for the opening part of it. And eventually chaos started to rack up as the race went along. So Balicki, you know, because he had kept his nose clean, worked his way forward and was inside the top 10 late in that race. But then there was a wreck with a couple of laps left and Balicki got caught up in it uh, as Daniel Hemrick wrecked. So he wound up wrecking. Uh, he also took out the guys I had bet that after qualifying, I had Brad Moffat, I had taken post-qualifying, and Ryan Sieg, they all got wrecked in the same wreck. So that was a not a fun one for me. Sieg and Moffat were 1-2 at one point. To see them all wrecked together was not super enjoyable. But uh, Balicki gave it a run. Uh, was hoping to get that 14-1 to top five, but couldn't quite get there in the Xfinity Series. In the Cup Series, the two outrights I had were Ryan Blaney at 11-1 to and Eric Jones at 28-1. to Blaney finished second and led most of the second half of that race. He ran out front, kind of controlled the thing. He had gotten passed on a restart. I thought he was going to run out of gas, uh, so I thought I'd lose that way. He got gotten passed on the restart, and he was running second behind Bubba Wallace. And Wallace was trying to throw a block and threw too many blocks, and Blaney got in the back of him, and it caused a wreck. Now, Blaney didn't get in the wreck. But the wreck slowed him down enough where Kyle Bush passed him right before the caution. So Bush justifiably won. They made the right call. Blaney finished second. Kind of a bummer to miss out on 11 to 1, uh, the ticket for him. But I think that with Talladega, for me, even if I have a guy who's leading entering the last lap, you kind of know you're not in a position. Like, you can't feel bad. Like, you feel like, oh, yeah, bad beat. It wasn't a bad beat. Like, it's always what could happen with Talladega. So 11 to 1 couldn't quite hit that. Same thing happened last year with Eric Jones. I had him at 70 to 1, twin Talladega, leading in the last lap, got passed by Ross Chastain, finished sixth. At least Blady finished third. But uh, that's kind of how things go at Talladega. Does not count as a bad beat, just, even if it might feel bad to have a guy lose the lead with two laps to go. As far as Jones, at 28 to 1, he ran a smart race. He kept on trying to make the third line work, which it didn't work the entire race. He was the one guy who was able to kind of like be a catalyst out there and make his way forward, but couldn't make it stick to get himself all the way to the front. At the end of the race, though, was working his way forward. He was good on fuel because he had topped off a couple of times and he was up in the top 10. That big wreck towards the end pushed him up towards sixth. So I thought he ran a smart race, just didn't quite have like the horsepower and uh, the the cooperation he needed to get the job done. Finished sixth, so two outrights for NASCAR in the Cup Series finished second and sixth. Kind of how it goes at Super Speedways. I'm okay with it. You know, uh, always want to win the bets, but I thought they were good process bets and they both finished pretty well, just couldn't quite get the win. Kind of the uh, theme of the week between uh, the Wu and Bramlett ones for Brandon and then the Benfica recommendation for Ed as well. So thankfully, Austin Cass bailing us out by going three for three in EPL last week. That is all that we have here for today here on Covering the Spread. But as mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow with Dr. Ed Feng talking some NFL draft. That'll be up in the afternoon. We'll record uh, sometime around 3 o'clock or so. So expect that in your audio feeds in the afternoon. We'll talk PGA and NBA with Brandon on Wednesday. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to the show or subscribe to the FanDuel YouTube page. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow to get you set for Thursday's first round of the NFL Draft. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. Mm -hmm.